of Christian liberty and liberty of conscience. The liberty which Christ has had purchased for believers under the gospel consists in the freedom from the guilt of sin, the condemning wrath of God, the curse of the moral law, and their being delivered from this present evil world, bondage to Satan, and dominion of sin from the evil of afflictions, the sting, the sting of death, the victory of the grave, and everlasting damnation, as also in their free access to God, and their yielding obedience unto Him, not out of slavish fear, but a childlike love, and a willing mind, all which were common also to believers under the law, but under the New Testament, the liberty of Christians is further enlarged in their freedom from the yoke of ceremonial law to which the Jewish church was subjected, and in greater boldness of access to the throne of grace, and in fuller and in full communications of the spirit of the of the free spirit of God than believers under the law did ordinarily partake of. God alone is Lord of the conscience. And had left is and had left it free from the doctrines and commandments of men which are in anything contrary to his word or beside it in matters of faith on, on worship, so that to believe such doctrines or to obey such commandments out of conscience is to betray to liberty of conscience and the requiring an implicit faith and absolute and blind and absolute and blind obedience is to destroy liberty of conscience and reason also. They, who pretends of Christian liberty, to practice any sin or cherish any lust, do thereby destroy the end of Christian liberty, which is that, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, we might serve the Lord without fear, in holiness and righteousness before Him all the, day, all the days of our life. And because of the powers which God had ordained, and the liberty which Christ had purchased, are not it intended by God to destroy, but would really to uphold and preserve one another, one another. They who, upon pretense of Christian liberty, shall oppose, shall oppose any lawful power or the lawful exercise of it, whether it be civil or ecclesiastical, resist the ordinance of God, and for the publishing of such opinions, or maintaining of such practices as are contrary to the like of nature or to, na or to the known principles of Christianity whether concerning faith, worship or conversation or to the power of godliness or such erroneous, of erroneous opinions or practices as either in their own nature or in the manner of publishing of maintaining them are destructive to the external peace and order which Christ has established in the church, they may be lawfully called to account and proceed against by the censors of the of the church.